All right, welcome to the N3 GWZ shock, and I'm using the Elecraft uh, KX3 and the KXPA 100 amplifier, along with the Elecraft PX3, which is a nice visual visual representation of uh, what you see on your spectrum. Anyway, um, I'm on 30 meters, and I'm going to be doing an FT8 demo. So up here I have a mixer, and I could turn up my audio to my speaker. And that's what FT8 sounds like. This mixer I have sending audio into my um, computer, so I'm just using a sound card. On the computer I run this application over here called uh, JT Alert. JT Alert is a program which gives you a bunch of different things. First off, it gives you the ability to launch other applications. So this is Ham Radio Deluxe. This is um, Cat Control for the KX3. And um, this gives you the option to make adjustments to the radio um, right on the computer. And it's very useful for uh, remote operations. And uh, down here is the HRD logbook. So the stations I've worked, it automatically logs and uploads to Logbook of the World, QRZ, QEQSL, etc. Uh, but what we came here to see is FT8. So um, the FT8 looks like this on the waterfall display. So every every 15 seconds, um, you get to take a turn at transmitting or receiving, and not too many signals on there today. Um, but in WSJTX, the program itself that does the decoding, it shows every 15 seconds what it decoded, and then what uh, what in hertz you heard it on. Uh, so it's decoding all these are active conversations showing um, two people talking, the grid square, here's some signal reports, Roger and a signal report. Now this guy's calling CQ so that's in a different color and if you're trying to work um, a new country it can come up with uh, even different colors for that. So you can set it up with a lot of different uh, things. On this side, this is the person you're actually talking to or if you set the receive frequency it'll decode that uh, down here at the bottom is a bar that's moving. This lets you know that 15 seconds are, you know, starting and ending, which is convenient to let you know when the next go-round is going to be. Uh, you could see the frequency here, and if you use this pull-down, it'll automatically change the frequency on the radio. So we go to 20 meters, it automatically changes the radio through Ham Radio Deluxe, so here we are. <laughs> so that's pretty useful, but let's go back to 30, because I was listening to 30 and I heard plenty of things here. Like here's a CQ, it's showing up Canada. Uh, and this is a recent decode, so there's nothing there. Um, down here at the bottom is a neat little application called JT Alert X, which kicks off all these other apps. And it also displays when somebody's calling CQ, it'll highlight it down here. And you could just double click it. Like here's a guy, I'll double click him. And it comes up with Enable TX. And I'm actually transmitting, if I come over to the radio, you can see the red lights on my ALC that just went out, 15 seconds expired. So this is what I transmitted back to him, his call sign, my call sign, and where I was from. And if we go up to here, you can see it automatically changed to the correct frequency. And you can see um, he's very weak, but he's there. Uh, and let's see what he answered. He is coming back to somebody else, <laughs> which is fine. He hears somebody else, not me. So I can wait for the next 15 seconds to go by. And, okay, that guy's in a QSO already because he's not green. And you can see here he's already talking to somebody. Um, and that's the signal report that you exchange. Um, this is a dB below the average noise level. Oh, here's somebody, England. I'll double-click him here. I could have also double-clicked him here. Um, and this is what I am transmitting. My audio output adjustment is down here, this blue indicator, and I would adjust that for appropriate ALC on my radio. Um, looking up here, he's very weak. He may not hear me. I'm running 90 watts. We'll see. Let's see what he comes back with. Still calling CQ. The application automatically replies immediately to him. Now his signal report is 18 decibels below the average noise floor, so he may not hear me. And it's also showing um, his time is 0.7 milliseconds off, which is okay. Um, 
compared to the, the clock on the web. Uh, this is the frequency in Hertz that we're on within the display. And let's see if I'm transmitting right now. We'll see what he comes back with on the next. No, he still has a CQ. So he's not going to hear me. I just come down here and hit halt. I could pick somebody else. Here's a Slovenia. Here's a WV4V. He has a negative one, so he probably can hear me because I can hear him. But it's a little bit slow on the reply there. I had to be much quicker because I only have 15 seconds to send how much data I'm sending. Okay, and I did send that. Um, let's see if he comes back. He's a very strong signal according to the waterfall. He sent something, but I didn't interpret it, so I'm replying back again. And uh, that was his decode. He's pretty strong. Let's see if he comes back on this go. So that was my transmission. Now I'm listening. I could turn the audio up, too. I could hear it. Nope, he answered somebody else. Our radio automatically let him go. Let me try this uh, Slovenian workstation. I double click him here or down here. It's transmitting. I can see my ALC is four bars, which is where I need it to be. And I'm listening. And he may or may not hear me. Conditions aren't the best right now. There's a lot of weak signals. There's a few strong ones in there, but some days this is all red, all little red ribbons. And he didn't hear me, so I'm sending again. Done transmitting. No, I don't think he's going to be there. Very weak. <laughs> if impossible, he's, he's probably faded away by now. So once I'm, I'm sure that I can't work anybody, I just hit halt. And then that goes back to listening. So hope, hopefully I'll be able to work somebody here and give you a demo that it's actually pretty cool when it's working. There's a real strong one up here in the middle. And another strong one here. Let's see if we get anybody that's doing a CQ. No, a couple 73s. There's another guy in FM19. So he might be pretty strong. He's in minus 5. There's WV4 Vcent 73. So he'll probably be calling CQ. Let's see if he does. And there's a uh, DF1 VB sending a 73. Alright, WV4V, we're going to try them again. So I double clicked them. There's my transmission in yellow. Look at the radio. 90 watts. ALC, 4 bars. That's what I need on my rig. And 15 seconds expired. I'm listening again. He's strong. Strong but fading. <laughs> and we'll see if I get him on the decode. So, he replied. It's coming up in red. Um, and he gave me a negative 15. I'm giving him a Roger negative 12. And that is decoded. Here's my report. It automatically figures out how much noise level. And you can also see up here it's red. So anytime you have red, you know that you're in a Q cell. So I'm not doing anything at this point. All I did was double click him. And let's see if he actually hears me. So he gave me an RRR. I'm now sending a 73, and it automatically pops up to log this contact. So it filled in the information already, the start and the end, the mode, the band, the signal reports, you know, what grid square he's in. And I have my power already set here. I can change this. When I hit OK, I come over to Ham Radio Deluxe Logbook, and there it is. It's already in here. And this automatically also uploads, uploads the QRZ. So if I wanted to keep my QRZ web page, it would be there. Um, but anyway, I had sent him 73. After the RRR, he replied with 73, and now it's done. The Enable TX, which was on red the whole time we were in a QSO, is now gray. So this QSO is over. I don't have to do anything. If I wanted to call CQ, I'd find an empty spot, come here,
click CQ. 